Hi, Darren. How are you? Darrera, I, I always call you. Just waiting for a few people to join. Um, I am going to share my screen right now. Um, we want sound. And I do hope that you can see my screen and that is good. OK, cool. People are joining now. Thank you so much. So just wait until one because some people have to, uh, you know, grab a coffee and uh, grab their sambos and get ready for one hour of power sharing what we need to know as supermarketers. I'm just making the assumption, by the way, that everybody here is a supermarketer, because if you're giving up your lunch on a, on a sunshiny Thursday, um, one of the first week backs, one of the first weeks back after the summer holidays, I know how committed you are to your practice and I know you're a supermarketer. Super. Okay. So just so you know, um, Monique is on a plane at the moment, everyone who knows Monique. So we have the lovely Scott on the chat and question bot today. Um, we haven't moved over to AI for that. We still had the human touch for that. So we are going to get going now, I think is ready. Time to go. I think it's time to go. Fair enough. OK, well, welcome, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us. Today, we are going to look at five things that you need to know now to stay ahead as a supermarketer. I am your host. I am Mary Rose Lyons. I am the founder of the AI Institute, and we are an AI skills training company providing AI training for individuals, for companies and for enterprise. Our whole mission in life is really to ensure that nobody gets left behind. The AI revolution is here. It's really exciting. And we deliver a whole lot of courses to bring everyone along so nobody gets left behind. Now, I genuinely mean this. This is my LinkedIn profile. For anyone who isn't connected with me yet, if you'd like to continue the conversation from today, if I bring up any ideas or anything you want to explore further, do please send me a connection request and just say in a webinar and then I'll know exactly where you're coming from. And if we're already connected, drop us an old DM and let me know how you found it. OK, so let us begin. Today, I'm going to share with you uh, five things that we you need to know now that every single one of these are possible today. So you can take notes and you can go away and you can do all of these things immediately. They are yours for the taking. So first up, we are going to look at saving hours on planning content. We're going to look at repurposing content. I'm going to urge you that it's finally time to ditch stock photography now. Really importantly, I'm going to show you how to train your own personal assistant. Now, we're all of the generation where we never got to have a PA. You know, at this stage in our seniority, if we were working like 10 or 20 years ago, we would have our own PA, but not today. However, you can have your own much more superpowered personal assistant, thanks to AI. And finally, I want to give you a little vision into the future of where it's all going with my waves analogy. So with that in mind, let's begin. Now, you've heard the truism, you won't be replaced by AI, but you will be replaced by someone using AI. And that is very true. So just a couple of stats that came out recently. This one came from Pipedrive in June 2024, which actually showed that it's actually the SMEs that are adapting quicker. So 42% are, of small companies are using AI in their marketing practice. Medium 11 to 100 are at 37% and the larger are 23. I can tell you this because I've been speaking to a lot of corporates over the over Q3. There's a lot of corporates who are actually ready to implement now. So that stat is going to change. This came out this week from Irish Jobs, looking at the level of adoption of AI in the recruitment sector. And look at this. 50 percent of medium sized recruitment practices in Ireland are using AI in their work and a smallish number of small businesses. So if you are a small business and you are in recruitment, you really, really need to get on board with it now because your medium and your large competition are going to overtake you. 
Five things that we need to know now. The first up is about planning content. So picture this. It's a Monday morning. You've got in your calendar content planning meeting. So probably you've got in about two hours. Now, we all know it's kind of hard to get your content out in two hours. I'm assuming you're on a team of maybe, what, three, three or four people. OK, so you all come along, you sit down, you're either looking at a blank white sheet of paper or, you know, Polly and John have lots of ideas of what needs to go into it. And you spend a lot of time kind of arguing about whose ideas are going to take prominence. So that can take up, say there's three people on the team, that's two hours, that's about six hours. Then we know we're going to have to have another kind of couple of hours of signing off and checking and approving. So I'd say we're looking at, say, say if we said three or four hours for the entire content planning function in a month times three people, that's about 12 hours time. OK, so keep that in your mind. If you're a one person team, it's going to be three or four hours. OK, so that's what's going on in your mind. Now, imagine this. This is a prompt that you can use where you're telling ChatGPT or your favorite co-pilot or Claude to act like a marketer who is great at creating content for social media. So what we have in here is we have on the X axis, we have the types of content that that we as supermarketers know works really well. OK, so you have actionable, motivational, listicle, uh, contrarian, I love the contrarian and so on. And then on the Y axis, we fill in what our content pillars are. So the content pillars are the kind of groups of messaging or the sort of the themes that we want to get out in our content plan. And in this case, I've done it up like I'm Sinead Brady, who is a career psychologist and she's taken our marketing course. So I'm going to do it up like I'm Sinead Brady. So I'm saying like who I am and what I do. And then on the Y axis, I'm putting in the content themes that someone like Sinead might have in her content. Now, you could go further than this and you could tell it to assign percentages on the Y axis. But for now, that's what I am going to do. So what I'm going to do is. I'm going to um, copy this. I'm going to bring it over into ChatGPT and I'm going to paste. Now, what it's going to do for me now is it is going to make a beautiful content planning matrix that is going to be personalized for Sinead Brady and her content pillars. And it's going to give a whole load of content ideas along actionable, motivational, analytical, contrarian, uh, observation, X, V, Y, et cetera, that she can use over here to set present, V, future and listicle. So really, someone like Sinead just has to come in and say, OK, I want to do a post on 21st century world of work. Will I do how to thrive a step by step guide? Why the gig economy is reshaping careers? How technology is silently reshaping career pathways? Hmm, I'll take that one. So literally then you just take that one and there's the first item on your content plan. As you can see, that took me a couple of seconds. OK, so a couple of seconds versus 12 hours. I know which one I'm going for. When you use this a lot, you can go and build this as a GPT. More on that in a moment. So I always love a little bit of audience participation when I'm doing these kind of things. So if you like that idea, would you give us an old emoji or a thumbs up or something? Drop something in the chat to say whether you like it or not, whether you're using something like this. Thank you very much, Maruf. Whether you're using it, whether you can use it or whether you're using it already. Now, don't take my word for how great this is. It was absolutely brilliant. Really found a very practical use. But I saved about two hours time this week. So that was really brilliant. Now, Sinead is a solo practitioner. Was absolutely Oops. brilliant. Sinead is a solo practitioner. So she was saying she spent, she, she saved two hours in one week by doing, this is what she said after I showed her this content planning matrix. So two hours in a week, times that by four, that's eight hours. She saved a day in literally just using this one prompt. OK, so absolute game changer. Absolutely love it. Just so you know, by the way, if anyone has any questions, please post them into the chat. And I have allowed lots of time at the end for your questions. So loads of questions. Ask me anything. I love an L question. It was absolutely oh, here we go. brilliant. Really, I feel like I have her on repeat. Sorry about that. So the next thing I want to take you through is content repurposing. And we practice what we preach. So content repurposing is extremely powerful. When you have a really good piece of content that you love, 
you can chop that up and deliver it in a variety of formats. Now, as marketers and as supermarketers, we've kind of known that before. But now with the power of AI, we can literally do this content repurposing in minutes. So an example I would like to share with you is a recent podcast recording. Ding, ding. You've heard it here first. We have a podcast starting soon. More on that in a moment. So what I actually did was I went into Riverside where we were recording the podcast. And anytime I see a button like this, which is indicating that I can download a transcript. If you see transcript, you really want to take that transcript. Likewise, if you're in any kind of a platform and they offer you the ability to uh, export a CSV file, take it because exporting the CSV is going to bring you numerical data and exporting a transport, a transcript is going to give you words. Both of them are like feeding fuel to your AI. So what we can do here is we take down the transcript and then I said in ChatGPT, summarize the transcript into a blog post, summarize the key points, turn the main topics into a blog post, focus on key takeaways and insights. And importantly, rather than just do a kind of a rehash, expand on topics that are particularly rich, create multiple blog posts, exploring them in more depth, press a button and boom, 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 boom. So here is a blog post which are uh, which is about the insights from Dr. Lolly Mansi, who's an amazing anthropologist. She's going to be one of the first guests on our podcast show. And I highly recommend you have a listen to her. So basically, we got one podcast, sorry, one blog post out of the bod- podcast really quickly. Then I ran the same similar type of prompt again. But this time I said I needed it to be written in an email style and it's going out to an audience of people who know us, who have you know signed up for, to receive this email. And I got this. And then, of course, because the beauty of content repurposing is that you can chop your content up into a variety of different formats so that you're appealing to people's different learning styles or the way they prefer to consume content. So then we got this, which is a social media post meetings, the emails, the notes, the background stuff that's going to be moved away from us. What am I going to be doing with my time? We then have to be very careful that we're not moving into this idea of middle class utopia where we say, oh, we're going to be sitting, I'm going to learn to play the violin and sitting around drawing and painting. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to be learning how to play the violin with all this extra save time. (laughs) Lolly is a fantastic, fantastic speaker, and I definitely think you should keep an eye out to listen to that podcast. But anyway, there is an example of how in less than half an hour, you can create three really rich pieces of content, which you're just going to schedule out and you're going to make that single piece of content travel further than it ever has before. Half an hour times that by four, like for four weeks, four episodes, and that's two hours of work to get all of that done. Now, There are numerous uh, AI powered uh, content repurposing tools out there. So Descript has been around for a long time and is very much the darling of the kind of YouTube influencer set. They're always talking about Descript. I like Riverside. Uh, I always like the kind of the underdog, but Riverside is great. Same kind of thing. It allows you to record your podcast, do lots of editing, and then you can create these snippets whereby It will apply AI to the video and it will decide which snippets work would work best to like to extract based on the content of them. Now, that's when you're using podcast material. If you're the kind of person who spends a lot of your life in online meetings, well, I highly recommend you take a look at an AI meetings note taker called TLDV. What I really like about TLDV that differs from the others is that you can create a a snippet or a reel, which is multiple snippets for of your meetings and then hit publish and you can publish them out directly onto your social media from within TLDV. So it's a goodbye to Hootsuite and other uh, social media scheduling apps, because if all you're doing is scheduling and I can do that in TLDV with the richness of the AI meeting notes, well, it's a no brainer. So there's a lot of shifting around in the world of SaaS at the moment and SaaS as in like software as a service. Most of these would be SaaS apps. 
TLDV is definitely worth a look at. The last two I'd mention on the content repurposing tool side of things are Opus and Repurpose. Both of them facilitate uploading long form video, such as, for example, YouTube or indeed a transcript uh, from a from a podcast. And with them, you can literally click to choose the destination of where you would like to repurpose to. And then it will select the best clips from your video that are suited to that platform. So, for example, if you tell it that you want to publish on TikTok, it's going to select slightly different uh, clips than you would if you were publishing it on LinkedIn. So definitely ones to look at there. So hope you like those tools. Now, ditch the stock photography time. Oh, yes. If you haven't done it already, definitely you need to do it now. So this is an example of a um, of some images that I got in a world famous stock photography tool that charges 65 euros a month. Oh, my God, 65 euros a month for this. And it gives me, you know, generic man wearing generic clothes in a generic background. Let's face it. And you know, any of the supermarketers who are in the group, you'll know how we have to work around this kind of thing. You know, you have to take the background out, you take it into Canva, you maybe drop them in a different background, something that's more worthwhile and so on. And there's a bit of kind of fecking around to get the kind of image that you want. And can I remind you, you're paying 65 euros a month for this for this service. However, with the image creation tools, which is like a really well advanced and evolved part of the AI, generative AI neighborhood right now, you can have full control over the kind of image that you want. So this was my prompt on mid journey. I wanted to get a confident male sales professional. I wanted I, I literally prompted the kind of background I wanted. I even said that on the screens, I wanted data analytics and competitor insights and customer engagement metrics. And I love cinematic lighting. I think it makes for a beautiful, beautiful image. So Midjourney gave me these four images. I could iterate down, iterate down. And, you know, Midjourney is $10 a month for unlimited images. So it is on an economic on a cost basis, it's an absolute no brainer for you to get rid of stock photography now and move on over to the AI image creation tools. Now, in the second module or the second session of our AI for marketing course, I will take you through all the different prompt structures that you need to know to get really good quality images out literally in a flash and in seconds like this. We'll also look at a few of the different models so that you can choose the one whose style best suits your needs. So just quick look at them at the moment. We have this is an example from Tom's guide. Um, so basically, it's what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get out images of people because let's face it, you know, when you see, you know, these image tools and they're all being highlighted on YouTube and X and so on. And they show things like, you know, um, a cat in a spaceship, a monkey doing something amazing and they're fun and they're great and they look great. However, they're not realistic and they're not ones that you and I supermarketers could actually use in our work. What we're looking for are images that we can drop into blog posts, images that we can drop into email newsletters, images that can go onto landing pages, images, images that can go onto ads, like exactly matching the target audience that we're trying to go after. So these are some examples of um, images that various different AI models have created and um, all following the same prompt. So my first point I would like to make is that DALI, which is the inbuilt I would almost say inbred, but it's the inbuilt image creation tool as part of ChatGPT is the one on the right. And I just I've never liked the images it creates. OK, now, the good thing is now that you can knock out a few images on DALI on the free plan of ChatGPT, if that's what you're on. <coughs> and if you're on the paid plan, you can knock out as many as you want. I just find it always gives me people in shiny suits and they just don't seem real or natural. Whereas mid journey on the left there, I think that's a really, really good image. What I'm really loving at the moment, though, is Flux, FluxPro.ai. It's the new kid on the block. Everyone was talking about it during the summer. If you were on your holidays and having a really good time, it might have passed you by. Definitely worth having a look at. And I'm going to show you why in a moment. 
And then ideogram, which is really good for creating really lifelike images of people. And um, so they're worth checking out. And definitely, if there's if there's just one thing you do after today is just ditch that stock photography and move on over to these tools, save money, create better images and have more control over your output. Now, one of the other reasons why I like I haven't screenshot this very well, actually. One of the other reasons why I really like Flux Pro is because it's the first AI image creation tool that does text. Yes. So anyone who's tried uh, another image creation tool and you get you, you wanted to do any writing, it usually misspells things and it usually drops in some, you know, some language that looks like Greek or Russian, for example, weird looking script to to our eyes. But the great thing about Flux Pro is that you can literally drop in the text and it renders it really well. So what I would say to you is this. We have a Mid Journey for Designers course. <coughs> Excuse me. It's starting up again for the third time this year. Actually, it's starting up again in October and um, it's a really, really good course. If you are interested in really creating images at scale or if you're a designer and actually designing images as part of your, your core uh, business. Now, the next thing I wanted to mention is getting your own personal assistant. Who wouldn't like a personal assistant? Well, as a super marketer, I am going to say now you need to have a minimum of five GPTs set up if you're a chat GPT user. And if you're not a chat GPT user, that's OK. I'm going to show you an alternative. Now, what do I mean by this? So first of all, I'd like to explain what a GPT is. So a GPT is like a uh, your own finely trained bank of knowledge that sits on top of ChatGPT. So, for example, ChatGPT's information or training data goes up to a certain point of time. So it goes up to, I think it's like April 2024 now. So it is trained on a large amount of information, but it may not be trained on how you do things. It may not be trained on your personal business processes or, for example, uh, your tender responses for for tenders or or your way of doing things. So when you create a GPT model, it's where you're actually getting the model to feed off your exact information as well as of the general chat GPT information. So as a very minimum, I recommend that you have the following GPTs set up for your business. So first of all, the one we have called Voice of Us is a GPT that we've created that exactly renders our tone of voice as the AI Institute. So it's, it means that anyone from our team can drop into Voice of Us and prepare anything they want, email, blog post, whatever. We have it split out in the GPT and the results that it's going to spit out are going to be written as if we've written it. OK, so Voice of Us. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. So the second one to look at is Voice of Them. So this is where you create a GPT that's all about your target persona. So Voice of Them is all about the key target audience that we're going after for our courses, all of their different pain points, all of their different needs. So when you're trying to plan something that's going to exactly match the, an exact your persona, you're going to go into Voice of Them first and get your content out of there. And then you might jump over into Voice of Us and then just shimmy the text a little bit. Salesy Sales is one I created after taking our really brilliant AI for Sales course. The next one of that is coming up on the 1st of October, actually. And that is a fabulous course that looks at the sales process from, you know, prospecting through to qualifying through to uh, specific content right through to a close. And what I did there was I created a GPT using the exact formulas and the exact process that I learned in the course because I took it myself. And that's where I can go to ask and to get any of my sales material out of there. It's really, really powerful. Tender is the night 
if you do tenders, if you do uh, grant applications, award applications, anything where you've got a bank of data and there's specific style of answering, you need to drop them all into a GPT and I call ours tender is the night. And then finally, content planner, the one I showed you earlier on as a prompt, we have that as a GPT, a little bit more fine tuning in it. And that's what we can use anytime we sit down to have a meet to look about content. So they are, I'm going to just take a little sip of water now. Uh, they are the minimum that you need to have as your personal assistance. Now, if you're saying, hang on, I use Copilot, you can still have a personal assistant. I'll tell you now. So these are, in my opinion, the kind of the benefits of the different uh, major LLMs, but they all now offer personal assistance. So Copilot for me, the secret sauce of Copilot, which is the Microsoft AI, is that it allows for workflow integration. So when you're using Copilot, you can easily access all of your files, all of your Word docs, all of your Excel, PowerPoints, Teams, meetings, everything. It's, it's really, really powerful for accessing company files. And there is an area within the premium part of Copilot called Studio. And that is where you can actually train out your own personal assistant to do specific things. ChatGPT, I always say that's a really good all rounder model or tool that you might use. And the the personal assistant within ChatGPT is called GPTs, and that sits atop and that's available within the paid, the paid product. So just so you know, if you're on the free version of ChatGPT, you can view GPTs and you can use them. But if you're on the paid version, you can create and that's where the magic happens. Claude. Many of us marketers love Claude. If you're loving Claude, give us an old emoji in the in the comments there. Um, we love Claude because it's just such an elegant writer and it creates a fantastic copy. But did you know that you can now actually build your own assistant atop of Claude? OK, and um, so it's it's a little bit more clunky to actually construct than, say, GPTs, but it's there and it works and it's yours to, to use whenever you wish. Finally, Back in the game is Google with Gemini. So they have now built out a thing which launched literally two weeks ago called Gems. And Gems is like a kind of a, a mix of the secret sauce of Copilot along with your personal assistant. So it allows for workflow integration. Plus, you've got all the power of being able to train out a little part of the model with just your thing. So if you don't have a personal assistant, I think you should go and set one up. And you, there's some ideas for uh, how you could for what use cases you can use to build your own. Um, but when we're doing the course, we actually do all of this with you in week one. We will sit down as part of the AI for Marketers course and we'll take you through the actual stages in setting up your own personal assistant. We'll advise you on the best one for you based on your specific instance and your case. And then we'll have lots of fun together over the course of three sessions, playing and working and fine tuning the assistance that you've built for yourself. So personal assistance, absolute, absolute game changer. Now, I dropped this one in this morning because I don't know if anyone saw this. If you're in the EU, we finally got memories on ChatGPT. So um, they had it in the UK, the US and the Faroe Islands randomly um, since about July. But because the EU protects us citizens so well, um, there was a few more hoops to be jumped and we've just got it today. So personalization options are I love on ChatGPT. We've already got the customization settings where, you know, we can tell it the words we don't want to use. We can tell it to use, for example, British English, that kind of thing. But memories is slightly different. It's where we can um, prompt ChatGPT or not prompt it. We can enable ChatGPT to remember key details about us. So it kind of saves us from having to repeat ourselves over and over. I see memories as kind of sitting between you've got your GPT, which is where like these are all our documents and how we do things. And that's all sitting here. I've got some customization. Memories is like a kind of like a little kind of a, a staircase in between the two of them is how I would describe it. So they are by default set on. Sorry, they are by default turned on and you can actually turn them off if you wish. That's perfectly fine. You go into settings and personalization to do that. If you're worried about privacy, don't be. It's not a big thing. Essentially, what it does is 
the memories will save specific facts about you. Now, those facts are able to go out and train the model. OK, but it's not going to be facts like, you know, what your bank account details are. It's going to be facts like I like to eat Asian food or this is the name of my company, et cetera, et cetera. But it'll save you time in terms of not having to keep on repeating and reminding it. So I'm going to show you an example of it just now. Um, it's available on all of the different accounts. You can do it up to 1400 words, which is kind of cool. Um, and the example I'm going to give you right now is this. I have literally just uh, I'm telling it, OK, and um, the following are the course dates for autumn. So I don't want to keep on repeating this every time, every time I'm doing a lot of kind of prompting and stuff like that around uh, course promotion stuff. So I'm going to go over into ChatGPT again. And I'm literally going to say the following are the course dates, booty boom. And now it's updated the memory. OK, so I can now. So it's actually it knows that that's something well worth keeping in memories. So I'm going to click on manage memories now. And as you can see, look, it's got my company name in here. Um, I like British TV shows. Yes, I like Harissa. And now where is it gone to? Oh, right there. Maybe it didn't update quickly enough. I'm going to go over to the top right hand corner instead. I'm going to go into my settings. This is where it lives. I'm going to go into personalization. I'm going to go back in here and hopefully, yes, it's updated. Here are the following course dates. So now when I'm using ChatGPT and I am saying something like, and we've got the beginner's course starting in September, it will actually add in the date of the 17th because it has remembered that for me. And then obviously when I'm finished with this and I don't want to remember it anymore, I can just go and I can click that little forget button. So I just added that in this morning because I thought like when something drops on the day of a marketing webinar, I owe it to bring it to my people. So that's the personalization of personalization options. Now, I've got one more thing I want to talk to you about, and this is about waves. I love this GIF because the man walking across reminds me of Anthony Bourdain. I'm a huge fan, RIP Anthony Bourdain. So we have waves. We are now in the second wave of AI for marketing. And I want to just talk you through the way I see the timelines and where it's all going. Now, we need to be prepared for the second wave because the second wave, I think, is going to be even more of a tsunami than the first wave was. So when you think about generative AI and how it's rolled out, we had, I suppose, wave, wave zero, which was for those of us who were kind of using the tools before that famous day on um, First, well, 30 November for many people waking up was 1st of December 2022 when ChatGPT 3.5 dropped. So before that, we were using tools like, for example, Grammarly, um, Jasper, which was called Jarvis and so on. So the tools existed. It just hadn't gone so, so mainstream and they weren't as powerful as they are today. So that was wave zero. And that wave lasted about three or four years. Then we have wave one, which is kind of what we're coming to the end of now. So from the moment that ChatGPT 3.5 landed to about now is nearly two years. The winners in this space have been obviously ChatGPT. You've got emerging uh, mid journey. You have things like Claude. These are just my particular favorites that I've put down on the slide because it's my slide. I can do what I want with it. You might have your favorites here. As we know, there are many, many different Gen AI apps out there. There's so many to, to choose from. Wave two is coming right now and I imagine it's going to last a shorter time because the, the 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 length of time is condensing. So the winners in this space are the AI automation platforms. So for example, make.com, Zapier, Gumloop. These are all AI automation platforms. And you might be wondering what's an AI automation platform? Well, they are a platform where you can connect all your different bits and pieces. So all the different AI models that you use, as well as your email, as well as your website, as well as your social media. So all of the different apps that you use as a marketer can all be brought together into one and you can create super automations. Now I'm gonna show you one of these in just one second. Just wanted to leave you with the thought that automations are here 
And then I would imagine what's going to come after that is going to be another wave. There's a lot of talk about what's going to be AGI, all of that kind of stuff, um, agent, agentic uh, uh, growth and so on. We don't know what it's going to look like. But what we do know is that the second wave is here and we need to be prepared. And to be prepared, we need to move on from just doing all the prompts ourselves and moving on to AI automation. So how it all started a long time ago as marketers, we were all busy, busy spending a lot of our time creating content, writing email, doing the summaries all by ourselves and not spending enough time on things like content repurposing or ideation and research and so on. So then we moved into the space where we are now, where, you know, we're spending more time on distribution, repurposing content, a lot less time on things like content planning, as I've shown you, a lot less time on sitting there and trying to create images because we can't get them out of stock photography when we can just get them in minutes. So that is where it's going. That's where we are. I would imagine most of you are doing this already using AI, you're doing your audience research, maybe some keyword SEO research, a lot of stuff on content, a lot of stuff on, you know, getting your style right, analysis, data analysis, image creation, streamlining workflows. I would expect that you're a group of supermarketers who are spending your lunchtime right here, right now. I would expect you're doing some or all of that already. But what you need to be doing is moving yourself on to the next level. And you can do that with me and my course co-creator, Claire Dupre, in the advanced course, which starts on the 8th of October. So let me just talk you through what this is. This is one of the automations that I've made in Make.com. And what this actually does is I have a sheet, a Google sheet, where I have a list of blog posts that have been published on our website. I have perplexity on board, love perplexity. So I have perplexity reading the blog post of my site. And well, basically it goes to, sorry, it goes to the sheet, it takes the blog post, it brings it into perplexity. Perplexity then does an analysis of it and gives a beautiful summary of the blog post as perplexity does. Then I have it going through to a router. So the first route is going off to ChatGPT and that ChatGPT instance has a beautiful prompt that is going to summarize the perplexity work uh, in the style that will work on Facebook. And then guess what? I've connected it to our Facebook page and it posts automatically there and I can I can control the time it goes out at. The second part, which took a lot of work to get right, is where it takes the perplexity piece. We have our chat GPT writing a beautiful prompt in the style that's going to really work well on Instagram. We have another one here, which is chat GPT making an image to go out with this on Instagram. And then we publish it to Instagram. And then finally, I saved my best Claude. Claude, there you go. Writing a beautiful prompt and then publishing to our LinkedIn company page. OK, do you want to see what this looks like? That's what it looks like. So here we have the um, which one is this? Yeah, so this is the uh, the LinkedIn post. This is the Facebook post. This one here is the Instagram post. But as you can see, it's a DALI image. So I'm not really mad about that. Um, but one of the things I have done for me to do on my learning time is I want to work out how to pull out um, I'd pull out DALI and push in something like Flux or Midjourney as the image creator. And I will have done that by the time I meet all of you when you come to the AI automation course, which I sincerely hope you do. So one of the things that's so magical about the AI automation space is that when you create um, when you create a flow, it's very easy to share it. So you can share your you can share your blueprint with somebody else and they can accept the blueprint and literally just tweak it for their own devices. So my words are that prompts is very much the sharing of prompts is very much wave one and the sharing of blueprints is the sharing is the, the, the thing of wave two. Now. I have a couple of courses coming up and I think you might be interested in them. My whole mission today was really to help you to become super marketers and to understand that things continually move. And just because you've learned how to prompt, for example, or you've worked out that you love Claude, that is not the time to stop. You need to keep on moving. And we are here to make sure that no one gets left behind. And my goal specifically is to help marketers. 
So in the AI for Marketing course, the very first week, you'll be building out use cases and building your own GPTs or other um, assistants. You'll be going deep on prompt sharing and we'll be getting you started immediately on some good productivity tools that you can use instantly. In week two, we go into we go deep on data analysis and also image creation. Look a little bit at video, but video isn't really there yet. I think video still has a little bit to go. Um, and then we look at how can we as marketers work on our SEO in the age of the Google search generative experience? That's a really interesting one. And we're doing everything hands on, you know, practical. The last session on this is where we're going deep on content repurposing. I'm going to give you a whole load of tools and a whole load of prompts that you can use to assist you with that. We look at data analytics. Of course, every single one of our courses has about policy, safety, security, ethics, being aware of bias. That's baked into every single course that we do here at the AI Institute because it's so important to understand how to use the tools safely. And then finally, I give you a brief introduction to AI automations. So that course is starting on the 18th of September. I would love to see you join us because you know what? If you do this course, it ends on the 2nd of October, you'll be ready to flip in to the AI powered workflows advanced marketers course. Now, this starts on the 8th of October. We're only letting people into this course who've either taken a marketing course with us because you have to have the basics, not the basics, but you have to have a high degree of comfort and knowledge of using the AI tools. If you haven't taken a marketing course with us, I'm going to create a quiz using Claude Artifacts, which is going to basically quiz you on the content of our AI for marketing course. And anyone who scores above 80 on that will be able to come through to this advanced course. So let's have a look at what we're actually going to be delivering. We're going to be looking at the landscape of automation. We're going to be looking at setting up your and accessing your API credits. Don't walk away. OK, don't worry about this. Just because it's API, it is not just for developers. When you're connecting all of your different AI uh, onto your AI automation platform, what you're doing there is you're setting up and you're you're buying API credits. It's very easy and we'll walk you we'll walk you through it. In that very first session, we will be demoing a simple automation and how we construct it. And then we'll be getting you to build your first automation. That's in the first session. OK, session two, we'll be looking at what are the kind of the key marketing tasks or the kind of tasks that make up a typical marketer's workflow. And we'll be deciding as a group which ones we're going to automate. And guess what? We'll be opening up our tools and we'll be getting to work on that. It's going to be so it's going to be such a fun experience doing this together and and sharing and learning together. I, I absolutely adore this this way of learning. And that's why all of our courses are delivered live, because you just don't get that same sense of accomplishment and that you're actually taking in the information when you're doing a pre-recorded course. Finally, week three, which is the last week before we all break for Halloween, you will be working on going into kind of deeper levels of automation, sharing blueprints with each other and, of course, the safety policy and security issues. So if you haven't taken any training in AI for marketing, you can be a fully fledged super duper marketer by the time Halloween comes. If you have taken a course with us, by all means, come and join us on the advanced and if you are still kind of thinking, I might just kind of dabble around for a little bit longer, well, then you might be well worth taking our beginners course that's starting on the 17th of September. So because you've all given up your lunchtime today to join join me and listen to what I have to say, I have a co code for you and it's it's a kind of a generous one this time. So if you use the 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 um the coupon code sharpshooter, you'll get 150 euro of the price of either the AI for marketing course or the advanced course. Now, just to point out, we have priced the advanced course at 50 euros less than the marketing course because anyone who's taking this is going to be a returning customer. So we're just giving you a loyalty discount there. But by Sunday night, you've got to use this code 
and you will get into the September and the October editions for 150 euros less. So I hope you're feeling as happy as those supercharged marketers in the image there. Where are we at? 42 minutes of value nuggets I've dropped with you. What have we done? Well, I hope you've scribbled a few notes and I hope you've decided that you're most definitely going to ditch stock photography forever. You're most definitely going to start getting really busy with repurposing your good content to drive more engagement, more reach and to deliver content to people in the style in which they want to take it in. I do hope you're going to look at using prompts for using your content creation for your content creation meetings and, of course, build out an assistant, have a little play with memories. Now, I would like to just mention this. We have a podcast. It's coming soon. It's going to be launching actually on the 17th of September. Apple permitting anyone who knows about podcasts will be able to tell you that. I'm so, so, so lucky. I meet all these really cool people over the course of my work who are really at the vanguard of implementing AI, really kind of pushing us to think about what we're doing as we're bringing AI into our workflows and our businesses. So Chatting GPT is the name of the podcast. They're going to be bite-sized, 20 minutes, no episodes longer than 20 minutes, 20 minute conversations between me and amazing, cool people from the world of education, creativity, architecture, retail, law, you name it, we've got it. So what I would love to do is find out from you if you would like to go on the list for this. So after this webinar or seminar, we will be sending an email to you. And on that, we'll be asking you for your feedback and whether you want to receive emails from us on Chatting GPT. And I hope I see you there. What I'd suggest is sign up for the emails. If you don't want the emails, you can always unsubscribe later. And we always honour that. No bad feelings. So now I have an ask for you before we move into questions. We are a brand new website, OK? We're less than a year old. And as a result, we are working really hard on trying to improve our search engine ranking. So as we know, if you get a good number of Google reviews on Google My Business, it does help that ranking. So if you enjoyed what you heard today, if you just hold up your phone, scan that QR code, click the little link, it'll bring you over to our Google My Business listing. And you can say whatever you like, but a review would mean the absolute world to us. It'll help us be found by more and more people. And that would be absolutely brilliant. I'm going to stop talking now and I think we're going to get some questions. Um, once again, just to say, love to connect with you, love having conversations. If your head is freaked out about any of these things, if you want to enthuse about anything, please connect with me on LinkedIn. If you're connecting, just say webinar so I know where you're coming from. If you're already connected, Drop us a DM and let's have the chats. And thank you very much. So question time. Um, who? What have we got going on on the questions? So Mary Rose, if you have a look at the Q&A channel, there's one from Linda, <clears throat> but I'll read it out now. Um, with the various paid tools, can you subscribe based on the teams or people rather than individual subscriptions? Yes, yes, you can. Actually, that is something that we do in week one of the marketing course. We help you look at what are what is the best subscription type for you? So uh, there's lots and lots of different um, ways of spending your money. Um, I totally get it. Like if you're a team of 20 people, you don't want to just go out and pay the premium if you know that 10 members of your team aren't going to be as heavy users, let's say, as the first 10. So that's definitely something uh, that we can help you work out. What you need to be thinking about, apart from just the cost of the tools, is actually around the training of the data and how open it is. And then also, now that we have memories, one of the things I would say is if you're sharing a ChatGPT account, don't be using memories because it'll get all confused by all the different people who are using the one tool. So the answer to that is, yes, it's possible. I love that you're thinking like that, actually, because you're thinking about like how to kind of get the best tool for the job. And that's definitely something we we do in week one of the marketing course. Next question. I think you must have covered everything because right at the moment, no extra questions. OK. Anyone? Anyone want to ask a question? 
Nope. Okay, well, thank you all for showing up. Um, I'm really, really, I love seeing so many people here and I really hope that you got something uh, really good from it. Um, I've been Mary Rose Lyons. I am the founder of the AI Institute. We exist to deliver really good, practical AI skills training. And I hope I see you in one of our courses soon. Oh, sorry, Mary Rose, oh, there's no one question. final question just coming Great. in from Ashling. When it comes to Claude for copywriting, would you say this is top tier? Yeah, that's my favourite. Now, that's in my opinion. But I think if you look around, like even look at people like I, I love uh, Kieran Flanagan, for example, from the Marketing Against the Grain podcast. Uh, he just talks about Claude all the time. I've been talking about Claude. I, I actually learned how to set up a VPN just so I could access Claude before it came to EU. Um, one quick thing I'll demo actually just um, on this is um, this is a great thing. It's called um, Chat Hub, right? It's a Chrome extension. And what it does is you've got ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, Llama, which we don't get yet, Bing and Perplexity. And what you can do is you can put in any kind of a prompt saying, um, OK, so make a uh, make a um, a goodbye poem for the end of a marketing webinar, right? So I'm just making this up. So what it's gonna do instantly, I'm having a bit of issue with, with Google. What it does instantly is it shows you all of the different models and what their results are. So for example, here's Claude, as our webinar comes to a close, we hope these new insights have arose. Marketing wisdom we've shared today to help your business find its way. And then I can say, no, don't want that over to Lama. As we wrap up today's session, so fine. So this is a great tool. If you're kind of unsure about which one you like for writing, use this one until you decide which one whose writing style you like the best. Mine are Claude number one, Llama number two, and then ChatGPT number three. Not a big fan of being co-pilot for writing. And for some reason, Gemini hasn't loaded. I hope I answered that question. Chat Hub, it's available in the Chrome extension store. Yeah, Emma, I agree. Bing is great for research. Bing, I'm not dissing Bing, like Bing Copilot, I should say, is a fantastic tool. And actually, just on the Copilot side of things, um, we have created a really, really good crash course in Copilot. It's especially for you if your organization has invested in Copilot. And we all know with Microsoft tools, oftentimes they're so powerful, but sometimes you kind of need someone to kind of like lift the rug and show you the way. So that's what we've done with our co-pilot crash course. It's a half a day and we'll take you through Teams, Outlook, Word, PowerPoint and Excel. And at the end of it, you'll be flying it on co-pilot. So if you've invested in co-pilot, it's a really good way of ensuring that you're going to get a real return on your investment. Any others? Nothing in the queue. I think we're all good. Excellent. Thank you all for coming. It's been great to see you and hopefully I'll see you all in a marketing course on your screen anytime soon. Bye. Thanks all. Bye.